friends! Today we're going to jump right in because we're picking up where we left off in my last video. Remember last time I told you we we're going to spend a couple weeks talking about how God is bringing all things under Christ Jesus and that in fact it's the way it was always meant to be. We spent a little time looking back and remembering that when God created everything, He created it all perfectly and that everything loved and served and recognized God as King. And then we looked forward and remembered that Jesus is God the Son. And the Bible tells us in Colossians that King Jesus both made everything right with himself when he defeated sin and death once and for all, and that he's still holding all things together until he comes back and makes everything new and perfect again. Wow, that was a packed lesson. Well, this week, we're going to dig just a little bit deeper and figure out what this means for us, for you, and for me. So one of the phrases that we've been using is under Christ. But what does that mean? If we think about Jesus as king, like we've been talking about for the last several weeks, it gives us a little bit of a hint. But let's look at these verses in Ephesians 1, 7 through 10. And we'll see if we can find any other hints. These verses say, In Christ we are set free by the blood of his death. And so we have forgiveness of sins because of God's rich grace. God gave us that grace fully and freely. God, with full wisdom and understanding, let us know his secret purpose. This was what God wanted, and he planned to do it through Christ. His goal was to carry out his plan when the right time came. He planned that all things in heaven and on earth would be joined together in Christ as the head. Hmm, these verses describe Christ as the head. So how is being the head, being king, or being over something all related? Well, our heads are in charge of our bodies, right? It's our brain, our head, that tells our body what to do. And a king is in charge of his kingdom. And that includes everyone and everything in his kingdom. And when you're over someone or something, generally it means that you're in charge over it or you have authority over it. So all these verses are kind of saying the same thing, that Christ is in charge of us and everything else in the world that everything and that everyone in the world is meant to love and to serve and to obey King Jesus. That can feel like a pretty big responsibility, can't it? And let's go back to those verses that we just heard. Ephesians 1, 7 starts off, In Christ we're set free by the blood of his death. Wait a minute. Which is it? Are we set free or is Christ in charge? Both. We are set free from the power of sin. Sin isn't in charge anymore. We're free to recognize Jesus as the king that he really is. We're free to love him and to serve him with our whole hearts and all of our mind because that's what we were created to do. And what God knows will actually make our hearts the happiest. I know serving someone doesn't sound like a free or easy thing to do, but we have to remember who Jesus is and what we know about him. In Matthew eleven thirty, Jesus himself reminds us that the work that I ask you to accept is easy. The load I give you to carry is not heavy. You see, if we force ourselves to just always do the right thing because we know that we have to, oh, it's going to feel exhausting and gigantic. And we're going to feel like failures because it's just not possible to do it right every single time. But the more time that we spend getting to know Jesus, the more time we spend looking at him through the Bible, praying and asking that he would become more and more real and precious to you, the more that you'll find how truly amazing and precious and lovely he is. And the more that you love him, the easier it is to serve and obey him. Think about your mom, especially on Mother's Day. 
It's a day where we usually spend a lot of time thinking and celebrating how much we love our mom and how awesome she is. And sometimes we even give her gifts. Maybe you've given your mom a gift like this one. It's a booklet of coupons or promises of things that you want to do for her. This one has all kinds of fun things in it, like helping in the garden or helping bake some fun treats or vacuuming or picking up toys. But my favorite card in here is the one that says, free choice. You wanna know why it's my favorite? Because what it's really saying is, mom, I love you so much. I think you are so awesome. I just wanna do anything you want me to do. It's right for us to give our free choice cards to Jesus. He is the king and he is over all things. He's the head. But the more that we get to know Jesus, when we see him and just even start to understand how awesome he is, the more we will want to give him our free choice cards. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for loving us so much that you made a way for us to be free. Help us to see you for who you are. Help us to see and understand how precious and lovely and amazing you are. Help us to love and to serve you with our whole hearts this week from a place of joy and love, knowing how very much you love us. In your name we pray. Amen. And that's it for this week, friends. We'll see you next time.